we were during the height of the pandemic and the peak of the supply chain building crisis. The lumber, yeah. lumber and building materials had gone through the roof. Did they come back with any changes for the price increases for materials? If you're going to buy like a pre-build, make sure that you are with a reputable builder and you sign an ironclad contract. Sometimes, depending on your area, you're just going to be at the mercy of who the builder is. Hello, and thank you for joining us on Constructive Conversations, the podcast that dives deep into the chasm that exists between contractors and their customers. Our goal is to improve communication between contractors and their customers by interviewing people on both sides and gleaning the keys of how to have your construction project go right. Joining me today is Kaylee Ball, a firefighter who just moved to Collingwood, Ontario, where her and her husband put a deposit down on a new build at the peak of COVID, right in 2020. You're gonna find out, did the house get delivered? Was it on time? Was there expenses due to COVID? How did it go? What was the process like? If you're considering getting into a new build for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to listen to this. Thanks for joining us today, Kaylee. So tell us about your experience. When did you start your build? We bought our yep. house the first year of the pandemic and we waited almost two years for it to be built from our builder, which was expected, mm -hmm. was the promised timeline. So it didn't, uh, it didn't like take more time. They were done when they said they were gonna be done it. So that was obviously, that's always like a huge thing, right? Is timeline for a lot of people, how long is it gonna take this to get done? We were during the height of the pandemic and the peak of the supply chain building crisis, the lumber, yeah lumber and building materials had gone through the roof our builder had like a thousand percent lost money on our build for sure and did they come back with any changes for the price increases for materials or anything no no oh. thankfully thankfully that's nice. something that i would say is like a big thing if you're gonna buy like a pre-build make sure that you are with a reputable builder who and you sign an ironclad contract because i've heard and i'm sure you've heard gajillions of horror stories from people being like oh my builder said the price changed oh the price has gone up twenty five thousand dollars the price has gone up fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars yeah and there was a lot of that during COVID, and i think i heard in your area there was builders who bailed absolutely. on people or said oh yeah yep. please cough up another fifty thousand dollars yep there's tons of builder companies that went out of business because they either under promised over promised or they're just like oh, we can build this for you, but it'll cost too much money. And they went out of business. Yeah, because they're obligated in their contracts. In my experience, there's gaps between contractors communicating with their customers. And then there's issues and you hear the stories all the time. There's issues and it's like, why are those issues there? Who doesn't know how to communicate well enough so that that stuff isn't a surprise? I think that you're definitely right. There definitely is gaps. I think there's a lot of factors. I think so much of it is exactly what you said, it's communication. I think some people have a business and maybe they don't think they need to communicate with clients as much, or they try to avoid communicating with clients a lot in order to not promise more than they're going to execute yeah, like on. They, so they don't want to commit. Yeah. Commit and be like, oh, right. I forgot I said that. So thankfully we were in a good situation. We were with a reputable builder. We were with Devin mm -hmm. Lee Homes. They're a pretty popular builder in Ontario specifically. And now we live in Collingwood. They've built multiple subdivisions here in the surrounding area. And then now they're going way up north. Plus the rest of their, they have a ton of other ones like that I don't even know about. So we knew so, they were a reputable builder, but they're a very big builder. They have a lot of stuff mm -hmm. going on. So you're not going to get face to face with anybody like about multiple questions that you have. Was it a different person every time you communicate with them? Was it a different person answering you or did they have someone assigned like this is your no. go to person with questions? Yeah, there was no go to uh -huh. person. It was always multiple people. They yeah. had it set up good, though, in the sense of like, Stuff was scheduled, so it was supposed to happen in stages because we were so far out. We were a year, nine months out from our obtaining house day. 
they had it set up good. We didn't do pretty much anything for the first nine months. They were just see you when we're when we're gonna pick stuff for your house. Going into it, did you have any experience building, buying new, or or no, experience like dealing with major contractors, anything like no. that? Like, and what no, was your we... expectation going into it? No, neither of us had any experience with that. Not like private contractors or obviously like a big contractor. We had gotten recommendations on what to do with new builds from other people, as you do if you're going to buy a new build or obviously if you're going to hire a contractor and build a house. So we kind of knew it was going to be a process and we would eventually we would pick our finishes or pick whatever your layout for your house is going to be through the builder. And then my expectation was just that we would periodically start hearing from them about what was going on with our build. That never happened. I guess that was just my expectation. They never said that that was going to happen. Something I definitely would have liked and I think could be included for some contractors would be timelines. Not even timelines, but just more communication. You don't even have to promise, oh, we're going to do the lighting next week. But you could do updates like, oh, we did lighting and flooring this week we did painting this week floors yeah. whatever how like uh, how often did they update you very very seldom we so we picked our finishes a year out honestly i can't even tell you i don't even remember hearing from them at all i think it was like they were promised to be done november 24th was when our house was supposed to be done yeah. so we started getting closer so we started driving by our build every week to see what was going yeah. on so that was your update you just drive by and that see was our update on. yeah we would yeah. just drive and yeah. go see look around the house see what's going on is that the best way to do that definitely not <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the yeah and you, you happen to be in the area yeah yeah, yeah we were yeah, driving so it doesn't work 20 minutes to go and see it because yeah we never got updates like oh poor foundation <laughs> like we never mm -hmm. got any kind of updates like that i think as somebody who was just watching the project from afar and which will be the case for most people watching their house be built they would like more updates i can see why that doesn't exist in the atmosphere a lot even with private contractors and other contractors you, i don't think you necessarily see that a ton with any other builds so right now we've had a deck and a fence built same thing we don't get updates from them we get oh we're gonna start on blank day oh so they're they're only they're only communicating because they need to, to tell you, yeah, we're going to be here. Yes. They're not going out of their way to say, yeah, just so you know, all the posts are going to be done by Friday or something yeah. useful. Because, and I think yeah. that doesn't exist in that sphere because of that, because contractors don't want to make promises and then have people come back yeah. and be like, well, you said you were going to pour posts today. <laughs> you said yeah. you were going to put boards on today because shit happens. And I think that's as something for a consumer. People just need to be more patient. There's a threshold for patience, for sure. I'm sure you've experienced mm -hmm. very patient people and very impatient people. But yeah. I think when it comes to being a consumer of such a high-end service, anytime you're going to have something built, you're paying someone else to do a service for you. Sure. It just happens. There's a big difference between hiring a shitty contractor and somebody who's just messing around, like ridiculous timelines and constant issues and stuff like that. But there is also a threshold for patience of how long stuff takes yeah I cannot, so, like, i've met people yeah. in the service industry who've been like it needs to be done instantly when i want it to be done <laughs> yeah, and they probably might not have realistic expectations but even if it was so say they don't know if they'll get the post done on wednesday or friday but if you got an email that was we're gonna do your fence post sometime this week just so you know yeah would you rather sure. be informed of that I think because, so, yeah, because we've had uh, other experiences with our own builder now. So uh, when they were going to put our sod in, when they were going to pour our driveway, yeah. we didn't always get updates for that stuff. Yeah, um, which shouldn't and, be hard for them to implement because uh, the big companies, a lot of them have software. They're running their projects on an app. So you just tell the app to send yes. out an update. Absolutely. Uh, so what, so was there any, while well, your house was being built, was there any surprises, anything totally unexpected we, that came up so our biggest thing we were shocked by how fast it went up the house was due to be done in november I don't, even, I don't think they poured the foundation until april so it was up super fast yeah. so that was a worry when you think oh well, my house is going to be built you don't think that's going to take a short amount of time at least not in my personal experience you don't yeah. want a house you don't want a house to be built instantly <laughs> yeah yeah you expect it to take 
take some time to build something that big. So, and they said, okay, two years is the timeline. They didn't say, we're going to pour your foundation a year from now. Yeah. And that's fine. Cause we knew we were phase two of the subdivision. So they had already built a phase. We were not the last phase either. So they were still working on existing phases and, and buildings that were already there. So we knew that they were doing work there. It wasn't like we were just like sitting around being like, when are they going to break ground? But there was a point in the spring, we were like, oh, in the new year. And then we we're like, well, it's Canada. But then, yeah, when they didn't even pour it until I think it was like late April, we were like, whoa, okay. Is this going to be too fast? Are they going to be done? And there was points when we would go visit the house that I was like, there's no way it'll be done. But right before November, the end of November, when it was supposed to be done, we came and we were creeping around and like the house didn't have flooring. It didn't have trim. And this was a week yeah. out from our day and being like, there's no way this is going to be done. And then having it be done. That being said, it is a big builder. They have a lot of hands on deck and people doing stuff. And if there's timelines for them to meet, there is incentive for them to meet those timelines because yeah. with, with these builders, there's often things in place where if they don't give you your house by a certain date now they have penalties to that they owe you yeah in those circumstances not all so contractors was, exist under that <laughs> yeah yeah and that is that's is something people should look for in their contract if that's yeah. a clause in that period when when you're watching you're just doing drive-bys watching progress was that stressful what's your stress level like associated with no uh, like with the whole stressful. process it was exciting because we would go there yeah. and be like, oh, what's done? What's done? I think the only time it gets stressful is if you were going there all the time and nothing was changing for sure. But the only, the reason that we were more incentivized to go and visit the property was because we weren't receiving those updates. If I got a text, oh, we did flooring and we painted the walls today. I would be like, oh, I would keep that in the back of my mind. Then you also wouldn't be surprised if you, it went a month and you didn't get an update and then you went there and nothing had been done. You wouldn't be surprised. You wouldn't be like, yeah. oh, I've just been sitting here and they're not doing anything. Like, why aren't they doing anything? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's back to if they communicated just a little bit more, then it would be I'm better. Sure. A better experience, basically. Not necessarily less stress, but just better service. Yeah, and I'm sure it's a fine line with contractors of that under and over promising of certain aspects because there's all kinds of people that they have their own existing timelines and they have their own idea of how long they think it should take you to do something, whether or not that's realistic. And that's why I say you got to have a certain level of patience when it comes to the service industry, because it's only going to benefit everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, the house was good. Like that, the other than them starting it, later that was probably the only surprising thing we did we did hear from them clo much closer to the date they were maybe a couple weeks out they were like yeah we're on track to close for like the 24th you're gonna do a walkthrough 24 hours before you take possession so we went through and basically just you noted everything that you took issue with in the house so on our walkthrough i was super surprised it was 99 percent done they were missing mm -hmm. one piece of hardwood floor, maybe a floor vent, a light switch cover. Yeah, just minor stuff. Literal was that, finishes. And was that walkthrough like a contract line? Like if you yes. don't catch it now, we're not covering it. No, 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 not nothing like that because there is an existing warranty that comes yeah. with the home and is part of the contract. That was just, I guess, they put it in their contract that you'll get a walk through 24 hours before okay, you yeah. take possession. I honestly think it's for them, for the contractor to cover themselves and be like, hey, we're giving it to you. It's not officially done. We're just going to show you what exists now as a buffer yeah. to and possession. Then, and then your expectation is there when you get possession. Like, oh, yeah, I knew that cover isn't done yet, but I know they know about it now. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which is fair. Cool. And... And to our builder's credit, 24 hours later, all that stuff was done. I was shocked. Yes. I, I didn't think that they were going to find a random piece of hardwood floor and put it in or remember to do these things. And they were all done, all of them, but one thing was done. So uh -huh. that was super good. And then, yeah, our house comes with a warranty. We have a Terry on warranty. They're super common for builders to warranty their work. 
And so that also goes with your contract and with buying like a pre-build or buying from a contractor, what kind of warranty they offer. Carry on is a reputable warranty. You don't want to get warranty from a random company that won't exist in a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> to do, do work careful. or honor work. And after you took possession, was there any issues? Did you have to have them back in for we stuff you found? One singular issue, and our one singular issue was that our dryer plug did not have power. We didn't notice that for a couple of days because we were waiting for our appliances to be delivered. But then when my husband went to hook up all of our appliances, the dryer had no power. But I contacted them and they immediately sent someone over the next day and they fixed it. And it was totally fine. So nice. I will say with our builder um, and having this subdivision in their building site, there's always people around doing work. So there's always people available. I'm sure that's different for older subdivisions or contractors who are warrantying work. When we contacted them with an issue, we would have somebody there usually within 24 hours to deal with it. Yeah. But that was our expectation because they were on site and they have an office here. Now the office mm -hmm. is closed and shortly they won't have anybody in the area. So the expectation for service has to change at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That'll um, take them longer to send someone over. So uh -huh. they were good in that regard. We've only had a couple of issues with the house. Having seen other builds online and the standard of pre-builds in other areas, we are very lucky. Our builder is very good. Our house is very good quality. Um, everything was done. There's no weird corner cuts in the trim, stuff that doesn't work, outlets that aren't wired properly. There's nothing like that. Things that are frustrating in a home that would be poor craftsmanship. Yeah, yeah, you paid for a new house. And was there everything delivered that you expected? Or was there anything like, oh, I forgot that they said they didn't include a range hood, you know, or the unfinished basement stairs? Or was that communicated well enough? No, that definitely was communicated well enough. They have a very good yeah. house design finishing people. They have a whole house and a whole team designated to that as part of their builder process. So when we went to choose our finishes and choose our house, they had said, you need to set aside half a day to do this because you're designing your entire house. So yeah. We had the expectation yeah. that it was going to be very in-depth and take a lot of time. There is a reputation that when going with builder finishes for stuff and getting builders to add things to your home there's a cost associated with that a markup on their service so you do have to be aware of that that being said we had a budget when we went in to do these finishes yeah we had a budget to be like oh this is how much extra we're willing to spend on our build something as a mm -hmm. consumer that obviously it's going to totally depend some people buy a house and they're like we are putting the best of everything in here now because we don't want to have to have somebody come back later or have contract people. Yeah, it's people. a lot of disruption Disruption later. Yeah, even if you might find a better price. Yeah. Yeah. And which is totally fair. Older people, people who are going to be in the home for a long time and they don't want to have more people do work or don't want to DIY the work will pay the extra buck essentially to have all of this stuff done. Not us. <laughs> We now we yeah. have a contractor's back for the second time this year finishing our property. Something mm -hmm. you should be aware of for some builders that they don't provide you with a deck and a fence in your yard. <laughs> Did they have, so you're in the subdivision, do they have conditions on your fence needs to be certain height, certain design for the backyard? Not, not with our subdivision, no. Okay. That is a common occurrence with some subdivisions yeah. is that there's regulations on what you can and can't cannot put in your subdivision or on your property mm -hmm. uh, almost like a homeowners association <laughs> yeah and, and yeah, some and some exactly. have that we we don't have that thankfully we're in a public subdivision that is yeah. so all the regulations fall under bylaw and the the subdivision itself had stipulations from the town so when they built the subdivision mm -hmm. on the plot of land they had to agree to water runoffs a certain number of water runoffs and certain number of parks and a number of other yeah. things within the subdivision. So the, the city planners, they'll yeah, put exactly. that in. Yeah, so we have uh -huh. parks and stuff like that, which is nice. But no homeowners nice. association. So yeah. that, being, that being said, we still have to pay for all of this stuff ourselves that comes with the cost of building your home. 
which is great because we get to hire people to do the work the way we want it to be done, which is the benefit of hiring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get more control over over the decisions instead of choosing from a menu. Like, oh yeah, these are the options. Yeah, exactly. So if you were talking to someone who wants to buy a new home in a subdivision and they've never done it before, what's like what's key advice you would give them? Oh, research your builder for sure. Yeah. Knowing how reputable your builder is. Are is it a big builder like ours who has done multiple, multiple subdivisions over multiple, multiple years? Or is this a private contractor that owns his own business and he's going to be building a custom home for you both of those experiences there's nothing wrong with either either both serve completely different purposes our next contractor will be somebody building our house for us because we are yeah, not you'll contractors. Go, you'll, go, you'll go custom next time exactly yeah we'll yeah. be having a private contractor build us a custom home if you're buying in a subdivision research your builder research the warranty that you're getting and then have realistic expectations for timeline have also a budget understand how much it's going to cost for everything usually you pay a deposit up front um so we paid i think it was like twenty thousand dollar deposit for our house to be built and then you don't cough up the money until possession day same as you would with moving so yeah and, and that, how many how many builders did you look at before you chose before you settled on yours not very many because there isn't a lot of new builds in this area where we live yeah. Devon Lee is currently building, I think, three of the biggest subdivisions <laughs> in our area. Our area is tourism area. So the other builders that exist in this area are very high-end builders. They're building yeah. Yeah. resorts and they're building hotel, Airbnb style places around the mountains and the community, which are not in our budget to look at. So sometimes depending on your area, you're just going to be at the mercy of who the builder is. And then you have to decide whether or not that's an avenue you want to go with. I would say in the in the area of buying pre-builds and subdivisions, bigger is definitely better. But then when it comes to custom homes, you probably want someone smaller to build your custom home. Somebody who can give you a lot more attention to detail and one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Basically, we picked our house from a catalog, from a wall of, of available houses. So our expectations were we're getting the house from the picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you, you know exactly what you're, you're going to get. So that's good. Yeah. And well, I'm sure when you do custom home building, you will have a similar experience of this is what I want built. But the difference being that what you want being built can change over time. When you buy a pre-build, you are buying exactly what you're buying. Yeah, you're locked in. Do you think yeah. that made the decision making process easier to have? Absolutely. This is my oh, option yeah. instead of saying, OK, here's a blank yeah. canvas. Yeah. Invent the house that you want. And I think that is for some people, if you have the budget to do that a thousand percent. When we build our custom home, that's the whole point of building a custom home. Everything is customized yeah. to exactly what we want within yeah. our budget and what and what we could afford now. We still had a boatload of options for our house and for our finishes like we did a custom shower in our bedroom because scott is very tall and we needed the shower to be custom so they were able to customize the height of the shower and stuff like that so there is wiggle room within that but we didn't have the option to finish our basement for us or we want you guys to build us a deck we didn't have the option of those add-ons right. whereas when you have a custom home builder if halfway through you want to put a a deck on or rearrange your entire kitchen you're going to yeah. pay for it but you but yeah you they'll that. do that you'll get the change order but that is an option yeah so yeah. for people who are have no experience that might be better that there's less decision making to do because then you don't have to hum and haw about oh do we want you know a deck like this do we want our bathroom to be different layouts did they have a number of layouts that you could choose from up yeah, on their wall they did yeah they did have different layouts within the building so we live in a semi-detached house and there was i think two or three different versions of our semi-detached house with varying options of locations for stuff like our laundry rooms in the basement it's not upstairs we don't have a kitchen island you could have a kitchen island and there was stuff we opted out of and stuff we didn't we install our own garage door opener but the builder installed our air conditioning and in hindsight should we have done all of those things third party absolutely because our builder we didn't get to choose the location of those amenities so our builder put our air conditioning unit 
at the side of our house by our garage door. It's very inconvenient. It blocks our mm -hmm. entire garage door entry. Whereas if we'd had it done after the fact, we could have chose the exact spot where we wanted our yeah. air conditioning. So things that are not necessarily a luxury when choosing a pre-built a home versus a custom home. Yeah, that's the little details. Yeah, that got missed. Oh, a thousand percent. It's, and is it enough that we're going to spend the money to move it? No. Is it just inconvenient? Yes. Are we less nitpicky than some people? Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's there's yeah. a lot of people who had, take issue with a lot of things, right? And there there's goofy things about our house that we don't particularly like. Our doorbell doesn't work. We've had it replaced twice. It still doesn't mm -hmm. work. They said mm -hmm. it won't work unless we buy our own. Just silly stuff like that. My only issue with our builder and the warranty was it comes back to communication. So with our, we have a, I think the three year warranty for certain things. There was a one year warranty on the internal stuff. So the house settling cracks and stuff like that for me throughout the house, but their stipulation in the contract is they'll come and fix it, but they won't finish it back to its existing state. So they came and they screwed in all the drywall screws that poked out and put mud on it, but they're not sanding it and painting it. Right. right. They don't send someone back. So that's kind of stuff is good for someone to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The guy said that to me when he showed up, he's like, we'll fix this for you, but we're not finishing it back to its original state. So yeah. if you want to do it, you can do it. If you want us to do it, then you have to finish it. And that was fine by me. Would that be fine for some other people? No, not necessarily. We had we had minor work and repairs done for our warranty. The one thing that they've never fixed for us was our basement window. So when they were filling and pouring our basement, they broke our window trim on our basement window. The plastic trim that surrounds it when they're putting cement piping through the window to pipe down into the basement. When we took possession of the house we said like hey you need to fix this window because you guys broke it they did come to fix it but when they brought the plastic trim parts the maintenance guy was like hey if i fix this it's going to break the seal on your window and your window won't be 100 percent waterproof and he basically gave me an ultimatum of being like do you want me to fix this window with the potential that it will leak or do you want to just live with it being broken so you can probably assume which i picked <laughs> yeah so it's kind of a half-ass fix we can break exactly. it more or we can leave it how it is basically people i can see where people get upset with contractors mm -hmm. and stuff like that when you run into situations like that where both outcomes are shitty and not yeah. something that you would like in hindsight did we care no because now we've built a raised deck that completely covers our basement window so not something that was a hill to die on. I think that's another big thing with contractors and yeah. your expectations for work is like, what's your hill to die on? <laughs> yeah. First yeah. off, and what is stuff that you can live with? If you're going to be 100% perfectionist with your contractor or with the work that you're expecting to be received, then you need to have the understanding that you're going to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That comes with the cost. So you're doing the deck now. How's yeah. the experience with that contractor? I know it's different, a builder versus a contractor. How's, how do those experiences compare? Oh, they pale in comparison. I mean, the service from our smaller business is better. You get the face-to-face, -face, you get questions answered, quick response and stuff like that. We had our deck built in the springtime and it was fantastic. We've received nothing but compliments on the deck. We basically gave our deck builder a custom drawing with mm -hmm. measurements and said, build this for us. And they said, for sure, no problem. You, they gave us a quote. They were under budget on the quote, which was great. The deck turned out really nice. They did it like super quick and we received nothing but compliments on it. Fast forward to nice. now. So they're back four months later to do our entire subdivisions fence. They've done 90% of the fencing in our subdivision. Not because they had a contract with the builder or anything like that. They went out all on their own and they got those contracts from people. And when they were here digging the bases for our fence and stuff, they actually came and knocked on my door and was like, hey, we just wanted to let you know that we noticed the deck we built you four months ago has sunk because in a new subdivision, everything is still settling. With all yeah. the rain that we've had this spring, the foundation sunk and settled and our deck was uneven. 
we didn't even notice because we don't typically stand on the back side of our yard. <laughs> yeah, you're always on heads. the deck. Yeah. Yeah, we're always on the deck. But it had sunk like four inches to the fact that our builder who was just out in the yard was like, hey, we messed up on that. We're going to fix it immediately. That's awesome. And so, and I was super stoked on that. I think that's that's a really big thing too with contractors in all service areas is owning up to mistakes. I think that the area of pride, yes. because it's craftsmanship, right? If somebody calls you on doing poor work, you're going to immediately take that as ego or take, oh, you have an issue with my work, but shit happens. Shit happens. Just stuff happens. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to kind of eat that ego and be like, oh yeah, well, like I'll fix that. No worries. It's benefits you in the long run now i have a fantastic relationship with this contractor i'm absolutely yeah, yeah. neighbor asks you're going to recommend them every time right for their decks so it's worth it I, for them to go and do those fixes and and to follow up and make sure their work is absolutely good. i mean to their credit if we had noticed after the fact we would have probably called them up anyways and been like hey can you come fix this yeah. but not necessarily right some people are just like oh well they did bad work and that's it and mm -hmm. and don't follow up because they don't want to deal with that but yeah, they, they did a really good job. They're doing a good job right now. The weather has been not great for pretty much the entire summer. <laughs> it's just been like rain for days nonstop and then 30 plus degrees. They dealt with uh -huh. the wave of rain first and they had to come back and like redo a lot of the work that they already did. No cost to the consumer, which is nice. But that's a more positive experience you would get with a smaller builder. I can call yeah. up my contractor and be like, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? Or I have a problem with this. What's this timeline? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Versus... you're going to get an answer right then. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Anything else? We we love our place, our, our new build. I definitely would do a new build again, have an opportunity. It's really nice to live in a new house. <laughs> new yeah. houses, they have a bigger price tag for sure. We've had to do a lot of stuff with our house. We put a water softener system in our house. We put a deck, a fence. Eventually, we'll have to finish our basement. We're the kind of people that are picking and choosing our projects. So none of our house has paint <laughs> and we're doing like little projects as we go. But there is definitely a luxury associated with living in a newer house. It has newer finishes. Everything's new. Everything still has a warranty on it. Yeah. Um, and everything works. Everything works. And nothing is weird, you know. <laughs> Uh -huh. There's not a light switch that you have no idea what it turns on and you'll never find out. <laughs> yes. Stuff like exactly. that. But yeah, it's been great. All we talk about is looking forward to building custom homes. So I'd be even curious to see you have more people on to talk about their experiences of doing custom homes from scratch because that seems even more ominous. Like I said, the luxury of the pre-build yeah. was as somebody who has a hard time making choices, <laughs> The pre-build mm -hmm. was perfect because it was, here are your choices. You don't get ones outside of this. So for me, that was great. The idea of building a custom home, while very exciting because everything gets to be custom, no idea. Yeah, Daunt and it very, gets overwhelming. Very daunting. Yeah. yeah. And so you'd want to hear from people who have done full-on custom homes. Absolutely. And okay. I think structure from like a contractor point of view, being like, this is our process like what style of house do you want do you want a bungalow <laughs> do you want to have three stories how many rooms do you want yeah. and like yeah go like where do they process? start how, how do they give you guidance yeah i have i have a home builder coming up in august nice yeah lots of interest here for people who want to come on the podcast so oh, be yeah a, be a lot of guests. yeah and i'll get some from ontario so we'll get we get a variety. I want to make it 50-50 so the consumer and contractors can listen and then they'll actually learn something useful. Oh, oh, I never realized I should be sending my customers updates more than every eight months. <laughs> well, yeah. Ho that literally... Hopefully someone listens to that. Or they're just like, oh, I don't care about to do that. At the end of the day, the contractor has no job without the consumer and the consumer, you're paying for a service that you cannot or will not do yourself. So the consumer is always like my way or the highway right the customer is always right but at, at the end of the day you wouldn't have work to be done without somebody doing it thanks for coming on the podcast <laughs> you're going to be episode one that gets published <laughs> nice Hopefully that'll so be you'll good. be the og nice yeah. i can't wait to tell the guys that are on the podcast mtl carpentry <laughs> those are Cust your deck builders yeah that's our deck and our fun guys 
here in northernish Ontario. <laughs> They'll drive around and build you great stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Thanks again for coming on. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, I'll let you know when the new episodes come out with the custom home builders. Yes, please. I'll definitely yeah. listen. Good luck. Thank you for joining to listen to this episode of Constructive Conversations. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music. Make sure you follow us next week. We have got an outstanding interior designer from the city of Calgary joining us. Thanks. Take care.